We have a special conversation for you today with the man right here, Scott Ehrenhall, the former coach of the Zanesville Blue Devils, coach 31 years. You know, I, I'm sure people have told you maybe thanks in the last few weeks since you've resigned, but I want to tell you thanks for everything you've done for the community. 31 years is a long time to do any job. So anyone that does a job for 30 plus years needs to, needs to receive a thanks. So how, how does it feel knowing you hung it up and, and man, that, that fun chapter is over for you? Well, it's been unbelievable. And uh, it's, it's hard to kind of put in words that 31 years have passed. And it was one of those situations, I think, uh, you know, the story has been told a lot, but honestly, I, I came here uh, with the idea I'd be here three to five years and then move on from that point. And uh, Zanesville has been a great place to raise our kids, uh, great community. And you know, a lot of people have uh, said thanks, and I really appreciate that. I didn't, I didn't come here to get a statue or a, you know, a pat on the back. Uh, I came here because I believed in the community and I thought it was a great opportunity. But at the same time, uh, I'm not tired of coaching. Uh, I just think it's one of those situations where uh, they need a fresh face. And you know, for me, uh, the other part of it, I, you know, I have a great wife. Uh, has been very dedicated. Uh, you know, I think she's the ultimate coach's wife because. Uh, she's able to sit in the stands and listen to all the negative, good comments, those kind of things, but at the same time uh, has been very supportive and I think I owe it to her and, and my sons and now grandkids uh, to spend my time doing other things. So uh, not, not tired of Zanesville, not tired of coaching, uh, just I th think it's a time to move on in my life. 31 years, one place, a lot of traditions, almost 500 wins. Um, you said when you when you got the job as a young guy, you know, out of school, you got the job, pretty big job. I mean, you made it a much more lucrative job uh, by the success you had. But what was your plan when you got into coaching? Was, was this just going to be a stop along the way of this long, stretched out coaching career across the country? What was your goal as a young guy? And then why did it end up just sticking here? Well, uh, when I graduated from college, I had that opportunity to stay and be a GA. And I was just kind of tired of that scene. and, and uh, uh, I was offered some other opportunities. Man, I, I fell in love with Zanesville, uh, and I fell in love with the kids. Our, the kids that we had uh, during that stretch, and, and I think people, uh, not, not for the glory of me, don't really understand that we were not a good program, we were an elite program of being in an Oak Hill Academy, 49 consecutive wins, being ranked in USA Today, and it was all due to the fact that we had uh, great kids who were talented, but daggone it, they worked. And so when other opportunities uh, kind of came, came forth, uh, I just didn't see the need to move. I mean, we had something very special here and we were able to keep that thing going for quite a long time. You did, and Coach, you brought it up and obviously we'll get right into it because if, if you ever to have a statue or a plaque or something, they almost need to put that three year window, 95, 96, 97, you will forever be attached to what that happened during that time period. How did it happen? You, you were four years in, this was year five, you had a good year in 94. And then 95, it, it starts, and then you're on this roller coaster of really unprecedented success for, for Ohio. Well, it, it was, it was uh, you know, I think I was young and dumb. Uh, you know, I made the statement when I took the job, I thought we could win a state championship uh, in five years, in a five-year window. Uh, year four, we really turned the corner, and then obviously year five, uh, we were able, able to win it. And then that 95, 96, 97 stretch, I think what is so remarkable about it is uh, they were our own kids. Uh, they were talented. I mean, you have to have talent. Uh, we had a great coaching staff, and man, we worked 24-7. And, uh, you know, it, it was a joy every single day. The practices were unbelievable. And, you know, I look back at those kids, and that's why I'm not one. I've told people, people said, you'll, you'll be a first-timer in the Zanesville Hall of Fame. Uh, I'm not going to be in the Zanesville Hall of Fame uh, during the time that I'm going to be alive because those kids uh, early, number one, uh, some of the kids that they forgot about that helped build it to that point of 95, 96, 97, they by far deserve to be in the Hall of Fame before I do. But uh, that, that level, uh, quite honestly, we were a college program. We had guys that wanted to play in college and did go on and play in college. Uh, but the weightlifting, the off-season conditioning, it's all due to the fact that those kids, they were committed. They were committed and they were fun to coach. They, they were unbelievable. I mean, I don't, you know, even today, you know, I'm 40 and I try to tell kids today, they just don't get it. They're never, no one's going to get it unless you experienced it. They're never going to believe how good those teams were. Um, you know, my story with you kind of starts that before we ever even met each other. I was in high school when you were having that run. And as a basketball fan in Muskingum County, I was just, I was wide eyed like these, these guys are stars. And I remember stopping every week to pick up the USA Today to see where the Blue Devils this week. I mean, that's unbelievable. Oh, it is. I mean, you were third in the country in the USA Today Top 25 with kids that grew up down the street. 
What's the chance of that happening? Uh, slim, very slim, and uh, it's special. And you have to have great support, obviously. You know, our administration at that time, Jim Robinson taking a chance on me. Uh, Woody Hardcastle is a great board member who got me here to Zanesville. Wh what about Don Stahl of building this thing? So all the pieces, as far as the boosters, the administrative support, the community was unbelievable. I mean, you know, the old gym held 2,700 people, and I tell everybody, I love the new gym is fantastic. They should have buried me in the old gym, uh, but you know the 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 heat was it was hot in there. Uh, we didn't have air conditioning. The kids uh, they came to work every single day, and to, it, the, you know people can't fathom that. I mean, I, it's hard for me to be able to tell this story to people today because they weren't part of it, like you said. But 1,200 season ticket holders, you had people that were waiting in line at 4 and 4.30 to get into a regular season game, not into a tournament game, into a regular season game. And as great as those players were that we had, they were better people. I mean, their character, the way they carried themselves, you know, the Blue Devil blazer and tie, uh, those are things that, that, that will, I'll, I'll, I'll cherish those memories for the rest of my life. Man, I mean, lines down the street to get in I mean it was it was a show and those kids man they were electrifying um, they even had the names to match man Jerron Singleton ATN Norris uh, Edwin Young Travis Young they, they they just fit the part man it was it was such a moment in time um, and just to recap for people that, that aren't quite still sure what we're talking about 1995 state champs uh, in 96, you lost in a regional, certainly a heartbreaker. And then 1997, uh, lost uh, in the state championship to um, Cleveland Heights, the, the team you beat in 1995. So only one state title during that run, but it also tells you how freaking hard it is to ultimately win a state title, especially, again, with, with homegrown kids. It is. And, you know, as good as you have to be, and we were good, there's no doubt about that, you, you have to get a break. You have to be lucky. And I tell everybody, like the 96 team, it was probably the most underappreciated team that we had. Uh, they, uh, we won the state championship in 95. We came back, they won 23 straight. And we weren't playing nobody's. Uh, and that's the beauty as I tell everybody about our situation here. Yes, over the years, we could have had more program wins, but we were playing the Ignatius, the McKinley's. We were lining up with the best in the state. And it was twofold, obviously, to get ready for the tournament, but we had guys who wanted to play at the next level. And I'm as, that's as much as uh, I'm proud of what these guys accomplished. I'm proud of that fact that, you know, I thought we did it as well as anybody in the state of getting guys prepared for that next level. So, you know, to go through that series and I think back about that run of uh, 96, we, were, we, had, we had seen uh, Cincinnati Moeller, uh, we had seen the Ignatius and everything else. And as a staff, we quietly said, I don't really want to say this, but we're flat out the best team in the state. And I don't know if people remember that scenario uh, that we lost Travis Young. We beat we beat uh, Lancaster on a Friday night at Lancaster. It was a great team. And Coach Greathouse and I are great friends today. Uh, and then we beat Dave Morris, Mount Vernon team. We were, they were 104 and eight at home. He told me after the game, he said, I've never had a, a beating like this. And then I think it was the following Tuesday against Hilliard uh, Davidson, we lost Travis Young with a broken ankle. And we were not quite, we were still really good, and we were not quite the same, and we were that close to having three years in a row of going to the state tournament. And not at, nothing, nothing to say about division two, three, or four, but we were the, one of the smallest schools in the state, sometimes the smallest, and that was D1. That was the elite level. So uh, amazing to say the least, and really it's all credited to, to great players. Right, and, and you may have missed Coach say this earlier, but if you know a team named Oak Hill Academy, they had guys like Carmelo Anthony back in the day. The Zanes Blue Devils beat them in the Coaxial Tournament at the Columbus Convention Center. They beat Oak Hill Academy. I mean, that has to be one of those tops of the list, like how cool that was, and really opened up the country's eyes of who are these kids? Yeah, uh, amazing. Uh, I mean, amazing to beat Oak Hill and Steve Smith, and you know, kind of a side note to that, Duger Bauckham, who was an assistant at Western Carolina, who recruited Kevin Martin, uh, was recruiting at Oak Hill Academy. And while he was waiting for them to finish up, he was looking in the trophy case and he saw the Battelle Hall, the, the coaxial tournament. And when he came out, he told Coach Smith, he said, hey, that was your Zanesville beat you. I'm, I'm good friends with Coach Aaron Holt. He was still upset about it. I can't believe it. But we held them to one point in the third quarter. And uh, just, just incredible to say that a, a legitimate uh, small town high school team beat the number one team in the nation. Uh, and, and what an environment that was. That was that was big time basketball. I mean, that's pretty neat, you know, and, and you look, you've coached 30 years, so you've experienced a million different things, but really you've experienced the changing of, of the mental approach for kids, their abilities, 
and I'm sure you've talked to it with your players the last five years, like you, you don't get it, they, you know, they, they did this back then. What, what is the biggest difference with, with that group? Why was that group so good? And, and is it even possible to bottle up the grit and the, the effort those teams had as as time has evolved. Well, I think you hit it on the head. You said grit. Uh, you know, they. The, you know, today we talk about have kids really changed and everything. Uh, they have. The kids have changed. Some people say they haven't, but the environment around kids have have definitely changed. Uh, those guys during that area that we had, they they had the will to win. And so it's it's one thing to say. You know, I I equate it to a relationship of marriage. You know, some people stay married for 30 years. Some people, you know, it's it's a difficult struggle. Well, there's got to be a great will because you know there's going to be difficult times to keep it going. Well, the young guys that we had during that era, uh, that you know, I said they had talent, but man, they wanted to be coached. I mean, I tell people all the time that our guys, we would practice at five in the morning. If it didn't go well, we would say, we're going to practice after school. And I would always tell other coaches, coaches would say, our kids don't play, they don't want to work. Our guys, we'd go at five in the morning after school and we'd say, we're not happy with that. We're coming back tonight at seven. You know what? They came back and their parents were fine with that because they supported it because that's they wanted their kids to be successful and uh, when you have that kind of uh, grit or that will to win man it's fun number one as a coach and you know good things are going to happen to those kind of people yeah you're right coach i mean to get to that elite level as a public school is probably pretty impossible anymore with the way kids move around and uh you know kind of choose their path that's why i think it's so special and looking back on it the energy the hype the heat in the in the in the, in the gym is just can't match it, man. What what a time. Well, then we go from that in, into, gosh, you come down off the high a little bit. Or, yeah, all right, we're back to normal. We're still competing, still playing a brutal schedule that you always do. A guy, a guy comes through named Kevin Martin, skinny kid, little kid, maybe not even good enough to play in your program. Tell me about the evolution of Kevin Martin and, and how that evolved to kind of like that next real shining moment of your career, being able to follow his career and his development into an NBA player. Well, and I, I think that's a great message, and I don't think it's been heard enough in our community. You know, we had two freshman teams at that time, and Kevin uh, played for Coach Balo, who's my nephew, and quite honestly, Kevin was like the fourth or fifth starter on a freshman team. You know, the, it's you, know, you tell these stories and people think that you're making them up. Six foot, 99 pounds, you know, as a freshman. He'd run down to the left corner, you know, as a freshman, shoot it, you know. Sometimes he would get down the other end and guard somebody. Uh, and then to watch him really develop, and I, and I say he and Kyle Watucky were kind of on the same path because those two guys would be in the gym all the time competing against each other. Kevin kept getting better, kept getting stronger, uh, obviously, then he grew, and you know, as a senior, you know, was averaging 22 points. And I tell people that listen, he was doing that again against Ignatius McKinley, Saint X. He wasn't doing it against you know average competition. So I'm calling all my college guys I know in contacts and saying, look, I don't know, this kid can just score. He can just flat out score. Uh, but you know, the the key is, I think, for the younger kids today, many of them they wouldn't have paid the price that Kevin did. Kevin's on one of the two freshman teams. His sophomore year, he broke his arm, didn't play at the JV level. The great story is we were playing at that time, our JVs were playing at Garraway. We always went to Garraway and played in the shootout. Some of the Maslin teams would come there. Uh, we went to Wheeling, the JV team goes uh, to Garraway and plays. So we come back after that weekend, I get our coaching staff again, and I said, listen, Kevin's gonna be a junior that year. I said, I gotta have somebody who can score. Coach Rich Schumann was an assistant of mine. And I said, I think I'm going to move Kevin. I'm going to, I'm going to play Kevin on the varsity. He said, he's not ready. If, he, if he's going to be ready, I may have to find, a, you know, if you're going to move him, I'm going to find another job. I said, well, you might want to find another job. He goes from his junior year, basically a standstill shooter, averaged about 13 a game. Uh, I can still remember when I moved Watucky and Lear to the varsity that year. East Liverpool, I think, was ranked fourth in the state. Kevin, I, I didn't start Kevin that game. He came off the bench, scored about 20 for us, okay? Uh, how many kids would do that and pay the price? Then the senior year has an unbelievable year, then goes to Western Carolina and he's a pro. Kevin does not get enough credit for the fact of his work ethic. You know, obviously God blessed him as he progressed, but at the same time, he worked to put himself in that position. So everything that he has, he earned it. At what point did it click for you where you're like, he has a chance. Like, at what point did that click for you? Was it when he got to Western Carolina? Was it when Western Carolina took a chance? What, what moment was it for you where you started thinking, I think, I think it's gonna happen. I think he's gonna get a shot. Well, you know, the Cambridge game, obviously. I mean, you know, he puts 40 on the board. I mean, we, we couldn't do it. Cambridge is playing great defense. We couldn't do anything. Finally, I said, listen, we're going one four low and we're gonna let Kevin take over. I thought Kevin then coming from high school, 
what I visualized for him was at that point, probably going to get the mid-major opportunity. And really, Ohio State looked, and I think hindsight, they probably would have taken him, taken a chance on Kevin. But he didn't have a great AAU, you know, that's the name of the game. He sure. didn't have a great AAU career leading up to that point. I mean, he really wasn't involved with it. Uh, so he didn't, he didn't get the accolades that a lot of these other guys do. But I thought coming out of high school, he was going to have a chance to be a great college scorer. Now, when David Thorpe, his trainer, uh, called me and said, this guy has a chance to be a pro. I said, look, coach, I said, I know what it takes to get a kid from high school to college. I do. I don't have any idea. But you think he's good enough to be a pro? He said, yeah, I, th I think he can go, you know, his junior year. And I'm like, unbelievable. And then for him to go in the first round, uh, it, it's an incredible story. And the career he had, again, uh, you know, I don't, I don't think he gets enough credit for playing the number of years he played in the NBA. And then basically his career average is 18 points a game. That's that, that's doing something. Well, he, was, that level. he wasn't a scrub, that's for sure. I mean, he, he had a lot of great moments. What was that like for you when you heard his name? 27th, 26th pick 26th in the first round? 26th pick of the Sacramento Kings. What'd that do for you that well, night? <laughs> we, were, we were at our house that night, and uh, some of the former players were there. I can remember Jordan Lear was there, and obviously my sons and everything. And I mean, we had people upstairs watching the TV, downstairs, and we were ecstatic. I mean, and, and so happy for Kevin, because again, that's one of those things that, you know, you might have a kid who's really talented, and maybe he's not the best character, but you're still rooting for him to help. Kevin had it all. He had the package, the way he carried himself, the way he represented. So, you know, we were proud of the fact that he played in our program, but also you were very proud of the fact and happy for a young man who did the things the right way. And then to be picked in the first round is, is something else. You look at his resume and then you talk to people, I'm not sure you can find one person in this country that has anything bad to say about the guy. No. I mean, how many people can you say that about? I mean, there's probably people that don't like me, don't like you, yep. but I'm not sure there's anybody that doesn't like Kevin Martin. No, uh, he, he just has that, uh, you know, air about him that uh, he, he has empathy for kids. Uh, he, he's always very considerate. You know, he takes time to, you know, I'm not big time. You know, he hasn't, he hasn't changed as far as, uh, you know, the way he carries himself. And I think people relate to that. You know, it's like he's, a, he's an everyday guy, an everyday guy who's quite a superstar. You played in a lot of big games and interesting environments. 2003. Valentine's Day. Where were you? You remember? I don't at this point. Akron. Oh, LeBron. St. Vincent, St. Mary. Yeah. Playing. LeBron yeah. James just came back from the Hummer incident. Yeah. And you're playing, dealing with that. Like, playing at St. V, number one team in the country. What was that experience like? And going into, your, your 95 to 97 was one level of hoopla. This was something the country's never seen before. And that, that was showtime. And, you know, one of the good things for us is I tried to impress on our kids, listen, we've, we've been in these environments. And uh, it was interesting uh, because obviously LeBron watching him warm up and playing the game. Well, we had watched a uh, film on Matter Day. They had played in California on the way up. And so what our game plan was, uh, they had Shea Cotton who went on and played at Ohio State. So Jordan Lear was going to guard him, but we didn't guard him. And we told Jordan, you stay in the lane. We put Matt Ferris on LeBron, and on the way up, we're watching LeBron clank, clank. He can't make a perimeter shot. So we say, listen, uh, you know, Matt, you keep LeBron in front of you, okay? Make him shoot the perimeter <laughs> keep shot. Him in front of you. If he comes in the lane, though, Jordan's gonna step over and help. You know, we'll take some charges. Well, that day, obviously, LeBron shot it, and he shot it really well. I mean, he was knocking him down from the perimeter, and he hit one shot uh, down along the baseline. He spun back, and he come running up past me. He said. I'm hot today, Coach, and I said, no kidding. You know, I mean, it was unbelievable. But afterwards, I still remember the, the media asking me, you know, I think LeBron scored 47. What could you have done? I said, listen, guys, if LeBron would have wanted to post, he could have scored seven. He was unbelievable at the high school. He was the most physically gifted kid that I've seen at the high school level. But hey, we were right there. We had it till, you know, it was a one point game, you know, at the end of the third quarter. And they just, they, they went on a run and, and we couldn't stop them. But uh, it, it was obviously a great experience playing against LeBron and, you know, everybody knows what he's done. Another big part of your career, Coach, was coaching your sons. Three sons, it's one of the reasons you stayed. How special was that? And they all had brought different elements to the court different skill sets, but what was that like for you to have them grow up with you through the program and then get to coach them all the way through? Well, uh, not to coach them, because I, I tell you, it's one of the things that, uh, you know, you tell people this, and that I don't know if they really believe it or not, but it was never my goal to coach my sons. Uh, as a matter of fact, when my son Drake was going to be a freshman, uh, we had a serious conversation that, A, I thought about getting out. 
uh, if he wanted to do, are you sure you want to do this? Because it's one thing, you know, like I said, my wife had a great temperament. She could sit in the stands and listen to the criticism and didn't react. And unfortunately, that's what you have to do as a coach's wife. And uh, the beauty for her was she had her own life. Now, though, you're going to throw your sons into the mix. And that's difficult for a mother to hear the negative, uh, you know, talk in the stands. And it's, and it's part of it, uh, right, wrong, or indifferent. So, you know, we had that talk of whether I should stay in it. Uh, I'm glad I did. It was the reason why really I stayed at the high school level and didn't take an opportunity to coach at college because, you know, I wanted to stay married. Uh, I love my son. I wanted to be a part of my family's life. And a lot of times when you're coaching at the college level, you don't have that. But we had great experiences. But the one thing that, uh, that I, you know, I kind of throw up to my sons or in my own mind, that was I really a good dad? Uh, because I didn't want that, pre and, and it was, there was a lot of pressure there for them to perform at a high level, but at the same time, we, ha we had great uh, experiences together of all the times we spent AAU or whether in the program, and fortunately for me, I married smart, and all three of those guys went on and are very successful in their personal life, so I'm, I'm, I'm really proud of them, not for the fact of what they were able to do on the basketball court, and they were part of some really good teams, but really what they, uh, the way they were able to carry themselves in their personal life and now are very successful as young men. Yeah, it was neat watching them come up through the program. I mean, I've been around the program pretty closely for almost 20 years, you know, from maybe 2003-ish, um, between doing radio, TV, and, and, and video stuff, but um, it's all the evolution of, of your boys, and ending with Logan and his class of buddies. And you kind of knew, right? You knew that class of friends was gonna be special and they had a great two year run. And man, they brought the show back. If there was a team that brought the show back, it was the 07, 08 squad. Tell me about that run, what it was like for those kids going out and, and bringing the fans back and playing at the level they did. Cause that was a whole new level. It was. And you know, during that run too, uh, one of the things that's, that's uh, kind of overlooked is that, you know, the OHSA has academic all Ohio ones. And it used to be, you know, if you had a good GPA, you got it. Well, then they changed the rules, you know, about during that stretch. And not only did you have to be a great student, you better be able to play. And so, you know, we had guys during that stretch that made the academic all Ohio. That group of kids, we were always in the top 10 in the state as far as our GPA overall team. And then you throw them out there and they could really play. It was fun. So for those guys, uh, they, they loved each other, that group did. Uh, they did everything together, and man, they, they, they had a great run. 08, uh, obviously it was disappointing, you know, we lost to Newark. It was a team that, you know, I tell a lot of people, we had a lot of kids here who I would say worked so hard they deserved to win a state championship. Uh, as much as anything, you know, uh, Logan and Cedric Harris, who now is gonna take over, those two worked as hard or harder than any kids. They, they really deserved that opportunity, but that was one of those games, again, as good as you have to be, you got to get some breaks, and we didn't get the breaks at the right time. Uh, I was wondering whether we were good enough to win it. Obviously, we were, because Newark went on to win it that year. Yeah, fun fact about the season, I tell people, the Angel Blue Devils had two losses in 2008. Newark in the district final, and the Chillicothe Cavaliers, who won the state title in D2. Two state champions, you had them both on the ropes. And in fact, you beat Newark in the regular season, is that correct? Yeah, we beat Newark in the regular season, uh, beat Chillicothe in the regular season. And, you know, it was a one-on-one -on -one split with them. And uh, so, yeah, what, good guys. And again, another group of kids that just 24 seven, they were in the gym, they, 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 they paid the price. Any success that you're gonna have, there's a price to be paid. Absolutely, when I mean, we talk about the, the, the teams from the 90s, we talk about Kevin Martin throwing it down. What was it like every time you saw Logan Bear come up there and wreck the rim? Because he went up with no hesitation. Most guys just dunk on fast breaks. He was dunking on your head. What was that like as a dad? to be able to kind of keep that inside and watch, man, that, that was pretty cool. Well, you know, that's one of the things that, you know, his brothers and I, we talk about as a, as a, as a young kid. I mean, he was a kid that sat with Seth Martin and ate the extra Snickers bar. <laughs> and I can still remember as uh, he was an eighth grader, just become an eighth grader, and he came to the gym. We were practicing for the tournament. And he says, you know, he comes in, interrupts my practice. Dad, I can dunk, I can dunk. I was like, man, you know, like, go over there, the side court and everything else. Well, we were okay that year, but not great. And it's probably one of the worst things that happened to our team because next thing you know, we're practicing, we're hearing kawam, kawam. We turn around, we see this eighth grader down there and he's throwing him down. It's like, I told our coaches, I said, let's start him, you know, when we go to the tournament. So uh, it, it was fun, but you hit it on the head. I mean, I've, we've had a lot of guys here who can dunk, uh, but Logan was probably as good as anybody that I've had that actually dunked on people. I mean, he went over top of people physically and, uh, uh, again, I, hey, it's surprising. I would just say, hey, he got good genetics from his mother because uh, he, he could get off the floor and get off the floor quickly. 2010, kind of a swan song in a way. I mean, you, 
I guess you kind of snuck into the Final Four and then had a chance to make the championship game. Uh, it was a team that almost lost the tournament opener to Maysville if it wasn't for Tanner Gibson, a couple clutch shots. What was it like returning to the Final Four so many years removed from the 97 team, your last trip? How did you view it differently? Were you more appreciative? Were you just, what was that like for you? Oh, definitely appreciative because, you know, people talk in this area about who, who has the best program, who was the best coach to play in this area or the coach in this area. And, you know, I think hands down, you, you can talk all you want. And my, my perspective is winning is, is the most important When You know, it's the second byproduct. One, you want your kids to be academically uh, character-wise successful. That's the most important thing. And if guys have the ability and the will to play at the college level, that's priority number one. Two, though, is winning. And I'm winning big. You know, too many people, they think, uh, you know, they think small, they win small. Well, we think big, we want to play Oak Hill Academy, well, we win big. Well, during that stretch, though, of those guys, uh, you know, kind of really, really playing at that high level, we were just so fortunate that guys were committed and that 2010 team what they did coming out of their junior year they weren't super successful we were solid but we weren't to level most of the time our kids then they would work the month of june july they would go play au kind of their separate ways we do individual workouts with them weightlifting that group came to me as a coach and said listen coach we want to stay together in july we want to work okay well, let's work so we did and you know during that year we got better and better uh, we took a difficult loss against Tri-Valley. We called that Remember the Alamo. And then we just got on a roll of, of really playing well and playing together. That team was so fun to coach because obviously you had Tanner, the superstar, but then you had other role guys and everybody did their job and everybody was happy for each other. And, you know, I can still go back to that. We're up we were up 13 again. We were up 13 in the semi. We watched, we watched our uh, two other opponents on film before we left. And I told Coach Seacats, I said, Cats, I said, look, uh, I think if we play really well, we can beat Port Clinton. I don't think we can beat either one of the other two teams in it. When we were up 13, I turned around to him. We were playing unbelievable. I told him, I said, we might be good enough to win the whole thing. And the thing I tell, I tell Jordan Bowder, sis, and those guys, listen, if I would have done a little better job coaching, the worst case scenario, we would have been runner up. But at the same time, we made it to the state and getting back to that point of who is the best coach, in my opinion, every coach. And we've, there's great coaches in this area, but listen, Gene Ford was five Final Fours. The rest of us are chasing Gene Ford. There's a lot of ways to get it done. And uh, so I was just happy, you know, we were pursuing that. But yes, I really appreciated that 2010 because as a young guy, you think it's gonna happen to you all the time. And then you start understanding how difficult it is to get there. And, and uh, obviously that was a great year. You experienced that for sure. Just the, the trials and tribulations and the, the frustrations that go into. I remember back when I would interview you when I was at the TV station and I, we'd come every preseason, I'm like, we're, here we are again, like it's been a full year. Another year's worth of work to see if you can do it again. Because that, you set that as the expectation. So every year you worked like you were trying to make it happen. And when you don't do it, it, it wears you out. You gotta start over it again. It does, it does. And you know, and unfortunately, I'm one of those guys too that puts a lot of pressure on myself. And I would tell our boosters all the time, look, if we don't make it uh, to the district, you probably should fire me. Because that's my goal. And we obviously want to win the state. Man, and it takes a lot of work, like you said. that that all the off-season things just to put yourself in a position to have a chance not saying you're going to you're going to do it but just to be able to have a chance to to be able to play at that level well i know the other teams in the east district were not excited anytime you drop back to d2 because there was that stretch there when, when logan was playing uh, in the mid 2000s where d1 the d2 and every time you got the d2 regional baby yeah. getting back there i think maybe I think every time you were D2, you made it. Yeah, I, mean, I think four straight years that we made it. Yeah, so you always got through and had a good team. But even in 2010, I do have to point out, when you won the regional against the sales, I'm not sure I've ever personally seen you more excited when Raheem threw that down at the buzzer to take this clinch it. You were so ecstatic. It was cool to see that for you. But was that is that a top moment? Just can you can you feel that? You remember that moment when he slammed I it do. down? I do. I do because and I another moment in that game there was a loose ball situation. Alan Harris made a great play of diving on it and getting a big time out. And yeah, there, and there was a lot of uh, I don't I don't know I, I don't want to say payback but kind of relief because we got beat by the sales you know during those stretches and had that opportunity to go to the go to the state and then here we are we had a team that wasn't expected to beat the sales and i know a lot of local coaches even because the comments always came back to me they're saying zanesville don't have a chance well we had a chance we went in there and we played really well 
and we beat them and uh, and went to that uh, final four. So, and those kids, like I said, those kids, uh, we had Tanner who was obviously outstanding. Raheem was an excellent player. Uh, Alan Harris was was outstanding, uh, and then JB, you know, Jordan Bowders just did his thing. Cole Carp, everybody played their role yeah. and put themselves in a position to win. So yeah, that was that was one for the ages. I think it, it was. It was a good one. It was, and that was. You had success after that. I mean, we can keep going on and on because there's other teams, you know, in, in 2014 with JT McFarland and Thomas and Dar, they're ranked number one in D1. Like, whether they should have been or not, you know, that's another another story. But you lost the last regular season game to Maslow Jackson and, of course, lost in the district tournament. And I personally thought that might have been your last year. Uh, they were a great senior class. It's been quite a few years. and, and you, but, but you had that year, then Cam Brooks Harris and his squad had some wins. and. Really, just you know, again, with the last exception of the last few years, what a, what a just every season, man, you never knew what was going to happen. No, you didn't. And you know, when we go back to some of those teams, like you said, when we made it to uh, four uh, regionals in D2, the one year still sticks in my head. You know, we were a bank shot three at Lyndon McKinley, and Logan was a freshman that year. And I don't think you know, when you talk about competition, uh, we finished the regular season, I think we were 500. But we played Ignatius, McKinley, we were playing all those teams. If that team, we take them and we play a softer schedule, we're, we might go undefeated. We might be you know, an 18 and four team or whatever going into it. But at the same time, those kids go to the regional final and it takes a bank three to keep them from a, an opportunity to, you know, to go to the final four. And uh, so, man, just, just, just incredible uh, play from those guys during that stretch. But at the same time, you know, I loved it every night that we were competing against you know, the best of the best. I mean, it's easy to guess your all-time best moment, right, winning it, but tell me in your mind, when you think back, maybe it's something minor that no one else knows. What's your favorite moment? Well, I think the moments uh, in the gym working with guys who want to get better. I mean, I love the games, obviously. You know, it was a great thing to be able to walk out. I mean, quite honestly, these guys are like superstars. You hit it on the head. I mean, we're walking into arenas and playing and, and basketball facilities where they were playing at home, and it's like NBA guys. Uh, you know, I think Kevin Martin said it best. It was like the uh, Friday Night Lights version in basketball with what was going on. Uh, you love the competition of the games, you know, thinking of a great game. You know, one of the best games that I was ever a part of is uh, Lakewood St. Ed's, Zanesville, in the semifinals of, of the state. What an incredible, I mean, 13,128 or whatever, St. John's, you know, unbelievable. But at the same time, uh, people, you know, might think I'm kind of crazy or whatever, but I love that fact of you give me a Kevin Martin, give me a, a Kyle Wataki, give me a Jordan Lear, those kind of kids who they wanted to come to these off-season workouts. And I watched them work and get better. That, that was fulfilling for me. That's what it was all about, that the work it took to be able to put them out there and be in a position to be successful. And I got as much fun uh, out of that as I did playing in St. John Arena with a, with a packed house. And I think people that aren't really part of this and kind of uh, never really coached uh, don't really understand that because the relationships I built with those guys were, were incredible. What's the key to longevity? 31 years. You just don't see that much anymore for a million different reasons, but what what's the key to somehow doing it this long i think being balanced i mean obviously uh, it's very difficult to balance the home situation but you have to uh it's one of the things that i've talked with cedric a lot about of you know the making sure that uh, family is really critical in it uh i think being in it for, or to write reasons listen if you're in this just to win or your personal uh, uh rewards i think you're going to find it very frustrating and difficult but uh you know for me watching these guys the uh, develop as young men, whether they were great players or not, and then going on to be successful in some small way, I felt like I was, I was part of it, you know, that I, that I helped him. And for me, you know, I go back to my high school coach, Walt Harrop, who was, I wasn't the best kid in high school. Uh, and, he, and he wasn't always the nicest guy to me, but he was a guy who disciplined me, you know, uh, and put me in a position to understand, hey, this is what you need to do to try to be successful. So I tried to give that back to the kids that I coached. Uh, and, and sometimes, you know, this is not always the easiest thing to do. And at that time, you know, at times they don't think it's, uh, you know, the best thing for them, but I think later on they understand. And uh, for me, that was really, really uh, very, very gratifying. You built this program. One of the reasons you didn't want to leave, you were so proud of what you built. You built it from the ground up essentially. It was here, but you gave it a next level. Uh, how proud are you of the tradition? And what people don't understand, because I've rode the bus with you a few times, you turn on the Blue Avenue, the bus stands up, you sing on the water tradition how do you how do you hope your 30 years um, is remembered well 
exactly like that because uh, the beauty of that is still the guys who played here, you know, the David Houston, Josh Olingers, Edwin Young, I mean, we can go on down the line. Of, uh, just, I, I hate to mention any of the guys because I love them all. And, you know, everybody said, who was the best player? And I said, I could never do that because uh, I, couldn't, I couldn't disrespect uh, so many great players that we've had to play here. But that tradition, as much as 95 is what people remember about us winning, it's still uh, a lot of the old red coats and people still remember that the, the Blue Devil blazer and tie. So, you know, again, what, what we tried to do and, and the beauty of this thing is, yes, we, we built something from the ground up uh, and all those little traditions were so important. And the respect that guys who were uh, have played here had for the younger guys and the younger guys had for the older guys, yeah, that's hard to teach. And we had that going for, for quite a long time. So I'll, I'll definitely always remember uh, those great moments and the great traditions of whether it's sliding in the, in the warm-ups uh, to standing up and singing the alma mater. But we, we were proud. I mean, the community uh, loved our kids. We loved our community. And it, it just built something that was so special that, uh, like I said, I, I hope to see it happen again. Uh, in my lifetime, and uh, but man, to live it uh, was unreal. Next steps for you. You got grandkids, got more on the way, you got things happening. It's gonna be a pretty good afterlife, right? It is, and, and that was one of the reasons too. With, you know, I watch a lot of coaches go to the end of their, their career and their physical abilities. They don't have anything else to give. Uh, I owe my wife more than that. Uh, I, owe, I owe my sons more than that, grandkids. I wanna spend time with that, and then, Quite honestly, uh, I, you know, I, I'm looking forward as much as I've loved the game to have my own personal time. And I'm healthy enough to be able to do some of those things and, and want to try to take advantage of, of looking at some new things and looking at life in a different perspective. You've earned it, man. Thanks so much, Coach. So that's Coach Scott Aaron Halter. I guess you're always kind of coach, right? You never, I never lose that title. Uh, coach Aaron Holt, still going to stay on athletic director for a little while longer, but uh, man, can't say enough. Appreciate everything you've done for Muskegon County basketball, Ohio basketball, and as you've enjoyed this conversation, you realize no one's forgetting about this guy anytime soon. So, thanks, Coach. All right, thank you, Aaron. All right, thanks for watching, everyone.